Hi, in this video, I want to talk about color gradients in Grasshopper and how you can use and set up colors in a better way in Grasshopper. And the reason I want to do that is because I honestly don't think the colors that are available inside Grasshopper are, are very good. So as much as I love Rhino and Grasshopper, I think we can do something ourselves to make that part work a lot better. So I think we'll, I'll, I'll just show you what I mean with the color gradients inside Grasshopper. You are most likely familiar with the gradient component, this one here. And uh, over here, I just made a little dummy geometry. This plot shows basically just the height of this mesh geometry here. And we can use different, uh, different color plots to show that. And the ones I see used the absolute most is this one here. And it's this one here. But what you will notice with these is that they are really clearly color bands. It's not a continuous color going from red all the way up to blue. So you don't really see a lot of detail, like what's actually going on in, in the data here. Um, you see five different colors, but you don't really see what's in between. Then you can go a little bit denser with colors, but this here also looks, looks pretty wild. Like there's way too much going on. And again, you have these very, very visible color bands. And while this may not annoy you in any way, it's just not very good at visualizing what actually happens in your data. So let's have a look at what we can do about that. Before we do that, I want to just quickly show an article that uh, Google Research uh, did a while ago. They have uh, made their own color map, an improved rainbow color map. And it's actually a really, really interesting read because you get to see all the thoughts that should go into choosing a, a color map. And this is something that is very often neglected in a lot of software. So I can highly recommend looking through this article and see what's actually important when choosing uh, color scales for the audience to be able to see what you intend them to see. So this is a good read. I can highly recommend that. And uh, then there is a library called matplotlib. It's used in Python and it's an open source library and they have all these really, really good color maps that you have freely available. So I thought, why don't we have these inside Grasshopper? So I decided to do something about that. So a while ago, about a year ago, I uh, put this little script here onto GitHub. And basically what that does is that it creates a color gradient library for you. So now I'm going to show you how to use it. And then if you want to continue watching, I can show you how to, to dig a little bit deeper with it. So if you go into Rhino and you type grasshopper folders, you get into your settings folder here. It should look like this. And then you go into this GitHub page here and you take this grasshopper gradients XML and you just download that. I am going to drag it into this settings folder. So now if we place a new gradient component out here, say gradient, and we look in here, you can see we have all these nice presets available now, including the one from Google that I showed you before. And if we just compare the two here with each other, then this one here is a lot smoother and it shows the data a lot better. One of my favorites is this one here. I think this one shows a really, really clear image of what's going on in your data and it looks good at the same time. So that's it. That's how you can use these color maps inside Grasshopper. But let's dig a little step deeper. If we go back to GitHub, we go back to this front page, Grasshopper Matplotlib Gradients. Then you can see there is a file up here. It's a Jupyter Notebook. It's basically a little Python script. You can go into that. Then you can see the code in here. You can't run it here. 
but uh, Google Colab is a web page where you can uh, use this. I'm just looking for it on my other screen here. So now we can go in here and we can say we want to load in from GitHub. We go back to this GitHub page, copy the address, put it in here and press search. And now you can run the code. So we can say run anyway. Let's actually just run everything. I'm not going to go through the details of this script, but essentially what we're doing is that we are loading in all the gradients here, like getting all the names of the gradients. And then we are in the remaining parts of the code, converting it to this, uh, what was it, XML format. What you will notice is up here, you can choose the density of your color map. So if you change this uh, three to a four, to a two, to a five, you will get different uh, density of points in your color maps, which can be quite nice. But uh, now we have been running the entire script and we basically want to access this Grasshopper Gradients XML file here. Then uh, I found from uh, Stack Overflow, because I see I forgot to put this into this, uh, this file here. We just take this in here and we copy the file name down here and then we can download it. But what I quickly want to do is that I want to try to show you what I mean that by changing the uh, density of the colors. So let's change this to a five and we we'll just say run all. Then the new file should have downloaded. And uh, we go over here, delete the old gradients file, go to my downloads folder and I copy this over here. Now I can see that has gotten this little two on. I'm just going to delete that. There we go. And let's go back into Grasshopper. And you can see if I put in a new gradient now, I still have all of these here, but they're a lot less dense. You see, we get this effect that we also had initially with a bit of banding, like they look like bands of color. If we take the same gradient as we have up there, just plug it in here and have a look. You can see you get a little bit more that you see these lines, which I don't like very much. So I prefer to use them at a denser mesh or not a, a denser density, I guess you would call it. So I hope uh, this can help you create nicer visualizations and help you visualize data in your models better. And uh, yeah, so yeah, thanks for watching. And I will uh, see when I can uh, put a new video out with a new topic. Thank you.